Antarctica is an incredible place. You'll never know what you might find there. Don't know what we mean? Let us show you. These are 20 unsettling discoveries in Antarctica that nobody can explain. Number 20. A UFO that crash landed. Conspiracy theorists sometimes make people roll their eyes into the back of their heads, but what they discovered in Antarctica shocked the whole world. Well, at least those who couldn't come up with another explanation, at least. Google Earth user and conspiracy theorist Scott C. Waring provided coordinates to a specific part of Antarctica which showed something quite odd. Broken ice and a strange disk in the water. Even though the Google Earth footage is blurry, you can kind of see something that looks like a crashed alien craft. When Scott posted his findings on the internet, he said what he found blew his mind. He believes it's about 40 meters or 131 feet across and is sitting in an area that looks like a heart. Scott said, I think this is the big one, guys, the real deal. He also went on to say that after he released the video, it's likely that some government somewhere will retrieve it. Although Scott and others had questions. Like, did the disc-shaped item cause the shape in the ice? And did they do it on purpose for the fun of it? He also thinks it's the perfect hiding place for an alien ship because nobody will stumble across it accidentally. 100% proof aliens exist and are on Earth right now, he says. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now, it's time for the odd topic. Just look at this photo. It's of a plane almost entirely frozen in ice. This exact plane has been missing for years. Nobody knew what happened to it, but then, many years later, it was found frozen in the ice of Antarctica. How did it end up there? chilling, both literally and metaphorically. It was only found because of climate change causing the ice to melt away. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag oddtopic. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. Volcano in the Ice Volcanoes are not anything unusual or rare, but having them in Antarctica under the ice does pose some problems. We already knew about Mount Erebus and deception, but scientists are concerned about an active volcano found under Antarctic ice in 2010. The latest volcano to be discovered was found under thick ice, and scientists say it could accelerate ice loss and raise global sea levels when it erupts. According to Washington University professor of Earth and Planetary Science Doug Veams, the eruption of that volcano could mean that millions of gallons of water could be created under the ice, the equivalent of many lakes. The water would then rush toward the sea and feed into the major ice streams draining into the Ross Ice Shelf. Currently, it's covered by over half a mile or one kilometer of ice and would require a massive eruption to breach the surface. However, the volcano's heat could melt the glacier's base, and meltwater could act as a lubricant that causes overlying ice to flow out to sea faster. It's predicted that sea levels could increase ever so slightly as a result. The issue is, we don't really have a way to study the volcano's seismic activity since most of the seismometers have been removed from the area, so it might just be a case of wait and see. Number 18. A Ghost Creature A lot of research goes on behind the scenes in Antarctica so that we can learn about rising sea levels, global impacts, and the changing of the ice sheets. Sure, we've been able to come up with some promising models, but it's been challenging for scientists to have a firm grasp on what exactly is going on. Surprisingly, much of what they're starting to learn and understand has come from a microscopic Antarctic animal that they've often referred to as a ghost creature. Researchers spent years and years looking for a primitive, white, insect-like creature they called the Ghost Columbula and started to wonder whether it even existed. However, they finally found it in 2020. This particular creature has survived 30 ice ages, and researchers believe its history could solidify how the ice sheet dynamics have impacted historical ecosystems. 
According to BYU biology professor Byron Adams, the evolutionary history of this ghost insect could corroborate what they already believe about climate change from the past, geology, and glaciology. With this information, they are in a better position to predict how Earth might respond to further challenges. The Columbula insects live in the soil, have very little mobility, and can only colonize areas with no ice, so their habitable space may expand and contract over time. Scientists hope to study their patterns to understand the ice sheet changes over time. Number 17. An Unexplored Arctic Tunnel there are plenty of caves around the world, and we've actually found some pretty cool things inside of them, like art from thousands of years ago. However, one of the last places you expect to see new caves is Antarctica. In 2017, scientists discovered an extensive cave system around Mount Erebus that had been hollowed out by the steam of active volcanoes. As they were light and could reach temperatures of up to 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit, there's potential for there to be an entire ecosystem underneath the frozen surface. Forensic analyses of soil samples had added some weight to their theory about that ecosystem because they revealed traces of small animals, moss, and algae. Researchers say that the results gave them a glimpse of what might be living under the ice, including plants and animals they had never seen before. Their next step would be to see if they could find communities living beneath the ice. It might seem like living in an ice cave would be too cold for most life forms, but that might not be true when that ice is near a volcano. According to lead researcher Caridwen Fraser, the heat from the volcanoes might make the caves warm enough to be comfortable, and as overlying ice was thin, plenty of light could get in. Number 16. Underground Lakes you might think we're past the point of discovering any new bodies of water. You won't wake up and find a new lake or sea one day, but things work a little bit differently in Antarctica. We can't always see what's hidden under the ice, so discovering a new lake is actually quite possible. And that's exactly what NASA scientists found with Earth-observing laser instruments. They discovered two active subglacial lakes sitting pretty under the Antarctic ice sheet. According to information from a blog, glaciologist Helen Amanda Fricker found a network of interconnected lakes that fill and drain underneath thousands of meters of thick ice shelves in 2007. Scientists already knew that there was meltwater underneath the ice sheets, but they didn't know there was a network with an active water system. With the use of NASA's technology, they were able to map out the subglacial lakes and measure the elevation data for the ice, clouds, and land. The discovery will help scientists learn more about the water system in Antarctica and how the glacial lakes work with the ocean water. There's even potential for them to predict the appearance and disappearance of lakes in Antarctica and calculate whether they're caused by global warming. Number 15. Blood Falls when you look at pictures of Antarctica, all you see is white, more white, and maybe some browny coloring from where the ice and snow have melted. But there's one part of the continent that'll break up the monotony of that coloring, and that's in Victoria Land, East Antarctica. Here, you'll find Blood Falls, which looks like where a mass murder took place. But it's actually far less sinister than that. It's iron oxide tainted saltwater that flows from the Taylor Glacier Tongue onto the ice of West Lake Bonnie in Taylor Valley. The iron-rich water comes from small fissures in the ice, and it's an entirely natural occurrence, even if it does look like the opening scenes of a horror film. Australian geologist Griffith Taylor was the first person to find it in 1911, and the valley in which it was found has his name. Back then, Antarctic pioneers thought red algae was to blame, but it was later discovered to be iron oxides. Water samples taken from Blood Falls show at least 17 microbe types and barely any oxygen. It's believed that the microbes use sulfate to breathe with ferric ions and then metabolize the organic matter within them. If that's the case, it's a metabolic process that has never been seen in nature. Number 14. The Gamberts of Mountain Range it might seem absurd for someone to discover a mountain range, but there's something different about the Gambertsiv mountain range in East Antarctica. This range is completely covered by ice and snow, so even though it's about the same size as the European Alps, you can be forgiven for not knowing it's even there. This subglacial mountain range is near the southern pole of inaccessibility underneath Dome A. The mountain range is thought to be about 750 miles long and 8,900 feet high, but is covered by about 2,000 feet of snow and ice. 
ice. As a result, the range wasn't discovered until around 1958 during the third Soviet Antarctic expedition. And as recently as 2008, we didn't actually know how the mountains were even formed because of a lack of data. However, studies have since shown that ancient plate collisions formed a core that was rejuvenated from the early to mid Mesozoic. We learned that Gambertsev was incredibly old during that study, forming about a billion years ago when the continental drift caused two plates to push together and create Rodinia, the supercontinent. Then, about 35 million years ago, the glaciers merged to form the East Antarctic Ice Sheet, which buried the mountain range. Number 13. Singing Ice how embarrassing. Even a big chunk of ice can sting better than I can. Purely by accident, researchers discovered that Ross Ice Shelf, which floats on the Southern Ocean by the Antarctic continent, vibrates, and these vibrations change depending on the weather. When the sounds are sped up, you hear what sounds like the music of a space alien movie or even the music from a didgeridoo. Researchers never intended to find out that the Ross Ice Shelf could sing. All they wanted to do was learn more about it, so they buried seismic sensors under the snow and left them there for a couple of years. Upon Upon analyzing about two years of data, they learned that the fern layer, which is the rough surface of the shelf, was constantly vibrating. These vibrations changed when the temperatures increased or decreased, or when the snow dunes were changed by storms. When these sounds were sped up, a glaciologist compared them to the buzz of cicada bugs in late summer. How poetic. Researchers believe that this information might be helpful for learning more about the health of the ice shelves that have been thinning due to global warming. They plan to get as much data as possible from their seismic stations and deploy more of them on vulnerable ice shelves to gain an idea of the snow's health. Number 12. A Giant Hole it takes a lot to baffle scientists, but many of them were certainly left scratching their heads when they discovered a giant hole the size of the Netherlands opening up in Antarctica. The hole was noticed as far back as the 1970s when satellites first started taking pictures of the Earth. Scientists noticed a large hole in one of the seasonal ice packs floating on the Lazarev Sea, but it disappeared once summer arrived. Then, just a few years ago, during the coldest winter months when ice should realistically be at its thickest, a massive 3,700 square mile hole opened up once again in the same ice pack, and it had grown by about 740% within two months. Then, once summer arrived, it retreated again. You would think it would do the opposite, show up when it's warmer and disappear when it's colder. It took decades for scientists to try and work out why this was happening, but they think they cracked the case. Researchers from New York University Abu Dhabi believe they are cyclonic storm scars. When warm and cold air collides at the South Pole, the winds of a cyclone whip up waves and push the Antarctic ice pack away from the eye of a storm. It's believed that these events may become more frequent in our warmer climate because the same areas will be exposed to more intense cyclones. Number 11. McMurdo Dry Valleys when you think of Antarctica, you think of ice, snow, cold, and wet. But you could probably die of dehydration there, especially in McMurdo Dry Valleys. These are primarily snow-free valleys in Antarctica, west of McMurdo Sound in Victoria Land. There are very low humidity levels here, and ice doesn't flow from nearby glaciers because of the surrounding mountains. So all you see are granite and nice rocks, a landscape of bedrock, and loose gravel. It is easily one of the driest places on Earth, and it hasn't rained there for at least two million years. That's why it's considered one of the most extreme deserts in the world. The only precipitation the dry valleys get is about four inches per year in the form of snow, and dry wind quickly melts that snow into the soil, even during winter. Any snow in summer is dissolved in a matter of hours. The abnormal conditions in this part of Antarctica are thought to be related to the katabatic winds, which is a type of drainage wind that carries high-density air under the force of gravity. Winds can reach speeds of up to 200 miles an hour, and as it makes its way into the valleys, it heats up and evaporates any form of moisture in its path. Number 10. Square Iceberg Ask any alien conspiracy theorist, and they might tell you that an extraterrestrial crafted this chunk of ice. Or ask any graphic designer, and they might say that the image is photoshopped. How on earth can a piece of ice be so perfectly rectangular without human intervention? It seems absolutely absurd. NASA shared a photo of an almost perfectly rectangular iceberg in Antarctica floating off the Larsen Sea ice shelf. It had 90-degree angles that looked human-cut, and it seemed entirely intentional. 
NASA took the image during Operation Ice Bridge, which was a mission to understand how the thickness, accumulation, and location of ice have been changing in recent years. That rectangle iceberg is believed to be a tabular iceberg, which has a flat top and nearly vertical sides. They happen when they break off ice shelves, and this one appears to be relatively fresh since it hasn't been rounded out by the wind, sea spray, and waves. It's unlikely that it would be a perfect rectangle the entire way around, either. We generally only see about 10% of an iceberg sitting above the ocean's surface, and it's not known whether this one is sitting on the ocean's floor or fully floating. Number 9. Mummified Penguins Seeing bird poo isn't usually that exciting, but it was for scientists in 2016. And it's not just because they're a bunch of weirdos. There had been rumors that fresh penguin poo had been seen at Cape Irizar off the South Antarctic coast, a remote cape overlooking the Ross Sea that penguins hadn't used for nesting for at least a century, if not longer. When Steve Emsley learned that someone had seen poop there, he was surprised. He knew all about the Adelie penguin colonies in their nesting spots, and this particular one hadn't been used in a about 120 years. So he and his team decided to investigate. They did find lots of penguin poo, but they also found a rocky landscape with bones and carcasses. The dry, cold air had mummified some of them, but others almost seemed fresh, with their skin and feathers still intact. Steve wondered whether they had missed a colony or it had been abandoned for the season. However, after using radiocarbon dating, he discovered that the carcasses weren't fresh at all. They were ancient bodies that melting snow revealed after centuries. The penguin remains were between 800 and 5,000 years old, and the rising temperatures had thawed their final resting place. Steve had never seen anything like it before. Penguins had originally abandoned that nesting site because snow and ice blocked their access to the water during the Little Ice Age. As melting ice allows that access again, it's likely that the Cape will soon become a new nesting site for other Adelie penguin colonies. Number 8 Ancient Meteorites when you see something that isn't white in Antarctica, of course, it's gonna stand out. So it definitely didn't take long for scientists to find a small black rock in 2002 that they identified as a meteorite. Within eight years, that small rock, which they called Asuka 12236, provided researchers with an abundance of exciting information. The golf ball-sized rock is one of the best preserved meteorites and may contain materials that are actually older than our solar system. When meteorite scientists compared the rock to other meteorites, Meteorites, they discovered that it had a heap of rare materials like amino acids that we find in our bodies, not rocks. Such an arrangement has never been found in a meteorite before. One question people had about the meteorite was how it remained in such excellent condition despite containing iron metal that would usually rust. It definitely helped that the area it was found in had very little heat and water. The meteorite also contained minerals that water had formed, along with silicate grains with strange chemical compositions. Scientists think it might have been a part of an ancient star that died before the sun in our solar system was formed. Number 7. The Southern Ocean the Southern Ocean has always been like the Pluto of the solar system. It wasn't even recognized as the fifth ocean until 1999, when the United States Board approved it. It's also known as the Antarctic Ocean and is the second smallest of the five oceanic divisions, Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, and the Arctic. James Cook was the first person to prove that there even was water around the southern latitudes of the globe, but geographers had long disagreed about the ocean's northern boundary or whether the waters now classed as the Southern Ocean simply form part of the surrounding oceans instead. However, oceanographic research has found that the southern circulation, which is a clockwise flowing ocean current from west to east of Antarctica, is actually quite important. So the term Southern Ocean was used to define the water that sits south of the northern limit of the southern circulation. Since we're allowed to actually call the Southern Ocean an official ocean now, we've been learning more about it. Apparently, its maximum depth is about 24,390 feet, and the crude submersible named DSV Limiting Factor successfully visited the bottom of this ocean in 2019. Number 6. The Notothenioid Bony Fish 
For decades, scientists have been studying the nototheneoid bony fish in water surrounding Antarctica, the Southern Ocean. And rightly so, because it's one of the very few species that can survive in ice-cold seawater temperatures that can drop as low as 29 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 1.6 degrees Celsius. It's such a robust fish that it makes up over 90% of the fish in that region, and scientists were keen to find out how it manages to live without freezing over. Most other fish would. In the 1960s, they learned that they had a type of antifreeze protein inside their bodies, which they saw as a vital tool for their survival. However, later studies revealed that this protein might actually not be as helpful as they thought. Sure, it can stop water from freezing, but it can also prevent ice from melting. In the 1990s, it was also found that the fish were carrying ice crystals in their organs like the spleen and gills. Researchers warmed the fish to the point that the ice melted in their bodies, but the antifreeze protein meant that the ice crystals didn't melt at the exact melting point temperature it would in other environments. Scientists still have no idea how the fish tolerate ice in their bodies or whether it actually kills the fish in the long term. Number 5. Don Juan Pond At the western end of Wright Valley in Victoria Land, Antarctica, you'll find Don Juan Pond. This pond is an unusual, small and shallow hypersaline lake about 5.6 miles west of Lake Vanda between the Dias Range and Asgard Range. Out of all Antarctic lakes, this one is the saltiest, with salinity levels of about 33.8%. It's so salty, in fact, that even when the temperatures plummet to about negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit, it remains liquid. The salt interferes with how the water molecules bond. The shallow, flat-bottom pond is even saltier than the Dead Sea, with 1.3 times more salinity and the second-highest total dissolved solids ever recorded. It's also the only Antarctic hypersaline lake that pretty much never freezes. While the saltiness very rarely changes, the volume and area do. A 1977 topographical map showed that the pond was about 62 acres, but it has shrunk considerably. By 1998, it was dry almost everywhere except for about 30 meters squared. The maximum depth of the pond between 1993 and 1994 was about a foot deep, but it was less than 4 inches deep by 1997. Number 4. Lake Vostok how strange is it that a lake could be one of the largest freshwater lakes on Earth, both in size and volume, rivaling even North America's Lake Ontario, but you can't even visit it for a dip? This is true of Lake Vostok, one of the largest subglacial lakes in the world. It once sat on the surface of East Antarctica, but has now been buried under 2.5 miles of ice for 15 to 25 million years. Lake Vostok is about 149 miles long, 31 miles wide, and over half a mile deep in some places. It wasn't until the 1960s that we even found out it existed when a Russian geographer and pilot noticed a smooth patch of ice from the air. However, scientists didn't truly get involved until 1993 when they used satellite-based radar to survey the area and confirm its presence. The only water supply to Lake Vostok is meltwater from an ice sheet. This makes scientists think that the water in the lake may only be thousands of years old, even if the age of the lake is unknown. We're still learning new things about this lake all the time. For example, we now know there might be a hydrothermal vent in the lake similar to those on the ocean floor. We also know how cold it is. Geothermal heat keeps the lake's temperature at about 27 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around negative 3 degrees Celsius. So it definitely wouldn't be a lake you'd want to take a dip in, even if it was above the surface. Brr. Number 3. Pyramid Mountain Pyramids have been discovered all around the world. We got limestone ones in Egypt, shell ones in Brazil, and some have even apparently been spotted on Mars by some conspiracy theorists. But what about Antarctica? Well, there's something that looks like a pyramid in Antarctica that got people excited, but it's not a pyramid at all. The first supposed pyramid-like structure was found during the British Arctic Expedition from 1910 to 1913. It was just a mountain, but it was referred to as the pyramid because of its shape, which kick-started conspiracy theories years later. That was the first pyramid mountain, but people spotted another one years later. It looks like a pyramid with four sides and is visible from Google Earth. According to geologist Dr. Mitch Darcy, the pyramid-shaped structures are in a mountain range called Ellsworth Mountains that spans 
several hundred miles. The peaks are composed of rock, so it's purely a coincidence that one peak has a pyramid shape. Dr. Darcy said it's not a complicated shape and is defined as a nun attack, which basically means it's a peak of rock that sticks out above a glacier. Similar shaped peaks can be found in the Alps and Iceland. Number 2. Giant Iceberg Breaks Off Brunt Ice Shelf for many years, a piece of ice twice the size of New York City threatened to break off the Brunt Ice Shelf in Antarctica. Two massive cracks had been moving further apart for a long time, which would eventually create an iceberg about 660 square miles wide and 500 feet thick. When that happened, the iceberg would melt in the ocean and add more water to it, contributing to rising sea levels ever so slightly. That eventually happened in 2021. The giant iceberg broke off from the northern section of the sea shelf and rapidly moved away from it. Even though scientists had been expecting it, they said watching it unfold was captivating. They also monitored it to see whether it would run aground or cause more damage to the Brunt Ice Shelf by bumping into it. The iceberg was given the name A-74, and it was not deemed a threat to the British Antarctic Survey Halley 6 Research Station. The research station had already been moved in 2017 when the ice shelf was considered unsafe. Number 1. Antarctic Ice Marathon Many people love running. It's strange, I know. They consider it a fun pastime and even something to do as a type of career. Running events have been held all over the world, and people travel thousands of miles to be a part of them. However, many runners have always aspired to complete marathons on all seven continents. Up until around 2006, that hadn't been possible because no such event was held in Antarctica. Richard Donovan and Polar Running Adventures decided to change that. They established the Antarctic Ice Marathon to enable marathon runners to achieve their goal of completing a marathon on that seventh continent. The Antarctic Ice Marathon and 62-mile race take place around a few hundred miles from the South Pole at the foot of the Ellsworth Mountains. Runners fly in from Punta Arenas, Chile, and immediately have to acclimatize themselves to the sub-zero temperatures and 24 hours of daylight. While there, they have to battle some genuinely challenging conditions. Not only are they running, but they have strong katabatic winds to contend with, wind chills down to negative 20 degrees Celsius, and altitudes of 700 meters to get familiar with. As you might imagine, registration and places are limited, and only the very fittest and strongest runners should consider entering this incredibly tough event. Antarctica is an amazing place, but we're only just scraping the surface of all the weird and wonderful things there. Out of all these things, which one amazed you the most? Would you take a trip to Antarctica if the opportunity presented itself? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!